everyone, Eugene and Jess here from Ways and Suburbs, and we have the privilege of sharing encouragement with you. And for the next three days, we'd like to focus on how we relate to God and different ways we relate to God and how He relates to us. And uh, today, we'd like to focus on us as children of God, and that means that God is our Father. And I'd just like to start off with this scripture from 1 John 3. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed on us, that we should be called children of God and what a privilege to be called children of God and to be children of God with him as our father. So um, one of the aspects of knowing God as our father is something we can think about in terms of our own relationships. Um, every one of us is either being a son or a daughter, so a child or a parent and a parent's one role is in the area of provision and that's just something so beautiful that the Lord also has promised us. Um, it's Jesus who says to his disciples, Do not fear, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And even just the very words that he uses there where do not fear, just addressing really the heart that uh, we can carry if we are thinking we need to provide for ourselves or we are lacking. And then saying, for it is your Father's good pleasure. Um, not that we come to a God who he will provide for us begrudgingly or provide conditionally or say, here's what you have or here's what you need and sort yourself out. But where he says it's his good pleasure, like that it brings him joy to provide for us as his children. And um, that's just a demonstration of how much he cares for us in his provision. And so even in a, in a parent's care and provision for uh, his or her child, it also comes out of a place of knowing what's best for that child. And so as parents, we know sometimes something that our children don't know. And so we say yes or no based on that knowledge. And so uh, recently I was doing some repair work on the house and I was on the ladder and, and my son Samuel is eight, was passing some of the tools I was working. And at one stage he, he asked me if he can also use a drill to drill some some holes in some wood somewhere and uh, I would have loved to have said yes but I just knew there was as good a chance he drill a hole in his arm than in the wood and so I said no because I know better and so uh, even for us God knows better he knows better than we do and so when we ask for provision and we ask for provision for specific things sometimes he'll say no and and that is because he knows better or we won't provide for that thing we are expecting him to because he knows better. And our role in that moment, as my, my children's role would be, is to trust their dad, to trust our father, that he does, in fact, know better, and that he will give us good things. And uh, one of the other attributes of a parent-child relationship, and certainly for me, the most incredible one is that the Lord loves us as his children. And you don't even know where do we start, just the pages of his book, um, Every book of the Bible, as you read it, you will see the love of God manifest and demonstrated to us in so many different ways that it's almost hard to narrow it down. But also in 1 John, in the scripture that Eugene shared earlier, one version says, Behold what love the Father has lavished upon us. So not just did he choose to forgive us of our sins or set us free from a, a life of a bondage to our own sin and our own distraction, but chose to lavish his love on us and as we think about even just the work of Jesus on the cross and um, another scripture in 1 John says by this we know love because he laid down his life for us and just allowing that really to permeate into our frame of who am I to God that his love for us was so much that he was willing to actually allow Jesus to die on our behalf that it's just it's not an ordinary love it's not an earthly love it's it's a love that's so much bigger than any of those things and in love also comes the word we don't always enjoy as much which is the discipline of God and Hebrews just say to us he disciplines every son that he loves and so we see both his love and his discipline as an outworking of that love and we know that his love is there because again you know it's best and um you know, for, for us as parents, we see sometimes things in our children and, and those would be sometimes acts of defiance. And we know what the end of that pattern of living would be. And as parents, we, we don't want to see our children go down the wrong way. And we help them in love into the right, the right way of living. And so even if I'd say to my children, uh, there's a plug point there, don't stick your finger in that. 
if one of my children then walks to that plug point and wants to stick their finger into that, that is very concerning because the end of that is going to be a problem. <laughs> and it's not going to be good for them or for us. And so even discipline in that case would be to get to a place of health and wholeness and goodness. And so for us, with a father, sometimes when we are disobedient, when we are defiant, he uses discipline very practically to get us into the right way of living. And, and that's his grace towards us. That's his goodness towards us. That's his love towards us. It doesn't feel like that in the moment, but it really is. Because if we weren't children, there would be no reason for him to discipline us and love us in that way. Because what reason would he have? Um, but because we are children, he does bring us into that place. And so, in summary, we've got a good father. And as children, we are so fortunate to have this father. And so, may you today experience the love, the care, the provision and even the discipline of a good and loving father. Bless you all.